Welcome back to Our Kids Online. I'm Bagel. And I'm Andrea. And we're so glad you made it. Yes. Now we're continuing our second week of the series Animated. Yeah. And just like the movies, the really cool movies that make you feel super emotional and 
emotion. <laughs> where in the Bible there were some amazing stories, which yeah. just like uh, th those big movies, they make us feel emotional. Emotional, <laughs> and they, not, not not just that, but they teach us some super important lessons. Yeah. We've been we've been following um, some of the prophets. Last week we learned about the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah, and I won't spoil it, but we're going to be learning about another prophet. I was just about this to spoil week. it. Don't spoil it. Make sure you don't spoil it. <laughs> and then make sure to stay tuned because we're going to have a fun game later with this stuff. Now, Andrea, do you think you can pray for us? Yeah, definitely. All right. Thank you, God, so much for another day of life. Thank you for the blessing of today's service. We pray that we may learn something amazing today about how faithful you are um, and that just that it help us love you more. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to check out the story? Let's check out the story. See you soon. Hey, our kids, it's time to do our memory verse, which comes from Romans chapter 15, verse 13a. It goes like this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Okay, let's do it again. And this time you guys can repeat after me. Let's go. Romans chapter 15, verse 13a. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Awesome. One more time, guys. Ready? Romans chapter 15, verse 13a. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Awesome, guys. See you next week. Hey there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV! Hosted by Carl! Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Grow TV! Oh man, how can I do such a silly thing? <coughs> oh hey Andy, sorry, I was just in my own little world. Oh, no worries, I just figured you want to talk, and, you know, because you seemed a little stressed out when you were texting me earlier. Stress? <laughs> Are you kidding? I wasn't stressed. Your text says, hey Andy, this is Carl. Can we meet up today and talk about what happened this week? I'm very stressed. Literally could not be more stressed. If stress was a city, I would be a mayor of that city. Stress, 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 stress. I'm so stressed. Um, yeah, uh, might have been a uh, teensy, teensy, weensy uh, stress. Yes, I was stressed. Something terrible happened. All right, tell me about it. I'm your friend. Let's talk it out. Okay, well, it all started when I was at school. All right, so I was at the school, right? It was a normal day, the music was playing, I just ate my favorite breakfast. Fried eggs with gator bites and nanner pudding. Everything was going great until it was lunchtime. So what happened at lunchtime, Carl? <sighs> well, there's this kid, Timmy. Everyone in school calls him Slippin' Timmy. Apparently he's notorious for slipping in the hallway and people make fun of him. Oh, that stinks. It really does. Anyways, so I got my lunch and I saw Slippin' Timmy all by himself. Then the weirdest thing happened. What? I got this feeling, this like really strong urge to go and sit with him. You know, talk with him, treat him nice, become a friend. Oh, that's great. I'm sure he loved that, didn't he? Carl, did you, did you not do it? Uh, I don't know, I got nervous and I'm sorry, I should have listened. And now I just feel bad about the whole thing. Ouch. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, and then that night I did my daily Bible reading and guess what I found out? I learned about a guy named Jonah. Really? What's his story? Oh man, you better buckle up. So Jonah lived back in the Old Testament days, a long, long time ago. And one day Jonah got a message from God for him to go to the city of Nineveh. Now Jonah immediately doesn't like that idea, and he doesn't listen. Kind of like how you don't listen whenever your mamma tells you to take out the trash? Exactly! So what does Jonah do? He hops on a boat that's going away from Nineveh. Then suddenly, a crazy storm starts happening. The wind's blowing, the water's moving, and everyone's losing it on board. They're running around, throwing stuff off the boat, doing anything just to help themselves. But guess what Jonah's doing? Helping them? 
Nope, he was sleeping. Probably because running from God is exhausting. But then the sailors came down and woke him up and Jonah admitted the whole chaos was because of him. What do you mean? Thing is, Jonah knew that this wasn't just some normal storm. No way, he knew the storm was a message. What was the message? Listen, God wanted Jonah to go tell the people of Nineveh that they needed to change their ways. But Jonah didn't want to do it and disobeyed God, right? So Jonah knew that somehow this storm was God trying to get Jonah's attention. So Jonah told the sailors to take him, throw him overboard, and the storm would stop. Did they listen? D did it stop? Yes and yes. But out of nowhere, God sent a big fish and it swallowed Jonah right up. Oh no! But just wait, the story ain't over yet. Jonah was in the belly of that giant fish for three days. Three days? That's right, but I don't know about you. Three days in the belly of a fish? Well, that would be pretty interesting. I'm not sure what I would do, but you know what Jonah did? Enjoyed his all-you-can-eat seafood buffet? No, he prayed. Can you believe that? I don't know about you, but I probably wouldn't think to pray if I was covering a bunch of fish slobber. But Jonah did, and in his prayer, he said this, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. And that's why I don't get it. Jonah's a prophet who loves God, right? Yep. And God told Jonah to do something, and Jonah didn't do that thing. You got it. Then why is God still taking care of Jonah and giving him more and more chances? Is that why you're stressed out, Carl? I'm not stressed! What I meant to say is, what do you mean, Andy? I mean, do you feel like you didn't listen to God just like Jonah didn't listen to God? I mean, kind of. I got that, like, strange urge to go make friends with Timmy. Instead, I just ignored it, and now I'm kind of worried that I upset God. And now I'm gonna get swallowed by something big and gross! I mean, I can't even walk past birds outside without me thinking that they want me for breakfast. I get that. I don't know. I'm just scared, you know? A little ashamed. I totally understand that, Carl, but get this. God still loves you. You think so? I know so. God knows every mistake you've ever made or ever will make. And God will forgive us for each and every one of those mistakes. But it's important to remember we need to do our best to learn from our mistakes and do everything we can to follow God more and more each day. And God gives us second chances. So that means tomorrow I'll say hi to Timmy and we can try to be friends. How great is that? Well, hello there, everybody. Are you ready to hear our big idea? Perfect, so am I. Today's big idea is God loves me even when I feel ashamed. All right, let's say it out loud on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. God loves me even when I feel ashamed. Perfect. Great job, everyone. Now I'll see you on the next episode of Go TV. Same time, same place. Bye. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of This month, we are learning about some of the prophets in the Old Testament. Each of these prophets had big feelings about what God had asked them to do. And we've learned that God cared so much about what each of them was feeling. We can be reminded that God cares about our big feelings too. With God, we can all feel secure, comforted, valued, and loved, even when our emotions tell us otherwise. God cared so much about us that He sent His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross and rise again so that we can have a real relationship with Him. So if you're ready to say yes to Jesus, in just a few seconds, you can repeat a prayer after me. If you've already prayed to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to do it again because you are already saved. But if you've never prayed that prayer before, bow your head and repeat after me, but really mean it with your whole heart. Say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and that I have done many wrong things. Please forgive me for all my sins. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for all my sins, that God raised you from the dead, and that you are alive today. So I put my trust in you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
That's wonderful. If you prayed that prayer with me, you have made the best decision of your life. You are now a member of God's family. We are so proud of you and excited for you. Now there are two things that you need to do. First is tell a parent or another trusted adult that you prayed to start a relationship with Jesus. And two, we want to celebrate with you. So let us know that you prayed by texting the word KID to 240-269-2100. And welcome to God's family. Welcome back, kids. Okay, so today we learned about Jonah, mm -hmm. which like in itself is such a Hollywood crazy like movie type plot, except it actually happened, which Absolutely. is like even crazier. Um, but my favorite takeaway from that story is that in the beginning, Jonah was like not really about what God told him to do. He was like, mm, I don't want to do this. And then he didn't want to do it. And then he was like, fine, I'll do it. But he wasn't really like, you know, with the disposition mm -hmm. of like, yes, God, you said it, so I'm going to do it. It was more so like, I don't know, you know when your parents ask you to do something, you don't want to do it, and you're like, fine, I'm going to do it because you're my parent. But we should really be like, yes, I'm going to do it because you're my parent. Yep. Okay, so that was him. But he does it, and then he wishes ill upon Nineveh, and then God's like, come on, Jonah. And then he's like, oh my goodness, like, how could I possibly feel like this? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What did Jonah do again? Okay, so he was supposed to go to the people of Nineveh. Okay. And he was supposed to tell them to repent. Okay. But he didn't want to because mm -hmm. he was like, no, they're terrible people. Like, yeah. they should get punished. Yeah. And God was like, no, I want to save them. And Jonah was like, fine if you want to save them, but I think they should get punished. And then he was like, okay, fine, I'll go tell them. So he goes and is like, you have to repent. And then he comes back and then he's like waiting for God to smite them. But he doesn't because mm -hmm. God was like, no, I want to forgive them. Yeah. And so then he's just like in his feelings because he's just like, that's not fair, but yep. ultimately there is a redemptive quality because like ultimately Jonah realizes, okay, yeah, this is how it has to be. Like God is a merciful God and yep. just like he forgives them, he forgave Jonah for his bad attitude. Yep. And that to me is the perfect segue into the big idea, which is God loves me even when I feel ashamed. Yes. No matter what I can do, God's still going to love me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have <laughs> kind of like a question. I'll get to the question, but like there's like a preface to it. Okay. So yeah, we've all been there. Mm -hmm. We ate. And then sometimes this happens after you eat, you just have to like burp because you know, like <laughs> you just got to make room. So when you burp, then there's more room for more food and like who doesn't love food? Mm -hmm. Okay. So imagine that like your shame is like that air trapped in your tummy mm. and then when you burp it out it makes room so like burping <laughs> it out is like giving it to god and like being like okay this is how i feel and then it makes room for just the holy spirit to come in and fill you up with goodness mm -hmm. can you think of a time yeah. where you like metaphorically burped out something that maybe you were like ashamed of or like you know like you kind of felt iffy about and yeah. then god came in and just Build you up with goodness. That was an interesting analogy. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. Eating a lot of food and being filled up. But honestly, you know, we're humans and sometimes we sin. And if we sin without asking God for forgiveness, it becomes a burden on us. Yeah. Right? And sometimes and to get rid of that burden, we have to ask God for forgiveness. So to make room for something like you mentioned. What was your question again? <laughs> Your que Andrea's question was... Very convoluted. Yeah. Um, but Vigil is answering it because yeah. essentially the biggest part of that is we have to ask for forgiveness. Oh, that's right. Uh, this So one time I got in a fight with my mom. And I didn't want to listen to my mom. But moms are usually right. Mm. And she was right about what we were fighting about. I don't even remember what it was about, guys. <laughs> but I just remembered asking God to help helped me through this situation and I felt peace after giving it to God and all the stress and anxieties that I had. It's like I burped and I just felt room for God's Holy Spirit to work inside of me. I felt God's love and it's definitely something that helped me better than holding on to those stresses and anxieties, right? Yep. Yeah. I agree. That's awesome. There we go. All right, guys, it is that time. 
It is game time. So, what is our game today? All right, it is called Guess. Ten questions. Ten. It's called ten questions. I always forgot, guys. <laughs> but listen, listen, listen. I have lost for the past three weeks, so I am fired up to win this one. I'm choosing purple. Okay, I will choose this um, powder pink. Okay. So what we need to do is this. The topic is sea animals. Okay. And we're each gonna write a sea animal down. Okay. And then we're each gonna get a turn, but we need to ask each other up to 10 questions. Okay. And we're, we need to try to guess what sea animal they wrote down. Okay, so are they like yes or no questions? They have to be okay. yes or no questions. Okay. I picked a good one. Okay. I picked one too. <laughs> Do you want to go first? All right. Hmm. Is your sea animal larger than a semi truck? No. Okay. Does your animal taste good? I don't know. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Oh no. Because now I'm thinking about... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I feel good about this one. It was your animal featured in Nemo? Yes, but not a main character. Okay. Is your animal smaller than a turtle? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> does your animal have scales? No. Okay. Does your animal have gills? That was, I'm not That's even a sure. Good question. Okay. I'm gonna s say no. It doesn't. Okay. Um. Hmm. Does your animal? Can your animal breathe both in the water and outside of the water? Like, is it a hybrid? <laughs> it depends on the type. Some can, some can't. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I got a good one, guys. <laughs> All right. Does your sea animal, is your sea animal friendly? Oh, I don't think so. It depends who it's interacting with. Okay. Hmm. But no. Okay. Guys, I have no idea what the animal Andrea is thinking of right now. Okay. Yes. I don't like this question, but. The answer is yes. Ask the question. Can you eat your animal? The answer is yes. I knew what you were gonna ask. Oh no, okay. Okay. Salt water or fresh water? I don't know. Oh yeah, these are ocean like it. Oh, I wasted my question. Okay, go ahead. Ask another one. Okay, okay, okay. Does it have eyes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Darn, guys, I'm not, this isn't going um, very well. Okay, so yours isn't larger than a semi truck. It is not. But you can eat it. Mm -hmm. I should have asked, is it commonly eaten? Cause I guess you can eat anything. Yeah. Uh, okay, it can maybe breathe outside of the water, but both in the water. Mm -hmm. And it lives in the ocean ocean, and it was a Nemo, but it wasn't a main character. Yes. But it doesn't have scales. It does not. Oh boy. Okay, can I find your sea animal on like a regular sushi menu? <laughs> yes. Oh. Okay. Okay, my turn. I think this is Can you last have it one. as a pet? Do people normally have it as a pet? No. Uh, I think I know. Are we out of questions? Are we No, we have four more. We have four more questions. Yes, we do. Okay. Um, hmm. What do you guys think it is? Hmm. Okay. 
Is your sea animal smooth to the touch? No. But it doesn't have scales? It does not have scales. There's no such thing as a furry sea animal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Okay, let's go with this. Does your animal... Oh, does your animal typically live with other animals? Like a pack? No. No? It's a solo. Hmm. At least I don't think so. Okay. Mm. I think I know. I think I know! Uh, I just keep imagining every animal I saw in Nemo. Mm -hmm. And they don't belong on a sushi menu if they're not main characters. Mm. Mm. Okay, in... Now I'm just gonna ask questions about Nemo. Okay. <laughs> I love that movie. Can your sea animal live in a fish tank? I guess the small ones can, but I don't think they're a common pet. Okay, but like eventually they would outgrow a, a fish tank. You already used up your question. Well, because okay, okay, like okay. No, no, it, it's okay. Depending on the type, it is. If it's the right type, it can live in a fish tank. Turtles are not on the sushi menu. Are you sure? Stop. I'm just kidding. Turtles are not on the sushi menu. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ask your question. I will ask my question. With attitude. <laughs> All right, my question is... Does it eat krill? I don't know. <laughs> okay guys, that was a bad question. <laughs> um, I keep confusing Nemo with Little Mermaid mm. in my questions in my head. Oh boy. Um, Okay, is your sea animal, does your sea animal have a shell? Yes. Okay. <laughs> does your sea animal have a shell? No. Ah! Okay. Um, oh my goodness, you guys have been watching Nemo in my head this entire time. Okay. How many questions do we have left? We have one more. Guys, I just know these numbers. We have one more question. Okay. And after this question, I have to guess. Yeah. And it has a shell. Mm-hmm. But it's on a sushi menu. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember this animal being in Nemo. But it has a shell. It was in Nemo very shortly. Gosh, I know that movie. Very shortly. Do you know that movie? I guess not. Hmm because things are just not adding up. Okay, um, <laughs> was your animal also in Little Mermaid? Oh, I don't, I don't think I've watched The Little Mermaid. Oh, I just don't remember The Little Mermaid, so I can't, I can't answer that, so that's a different one. Okay, um. I think the kids know Does your already. animal turn red when you cook it in its shell? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, I think I lost this one. Oh, man, okay. Does your animal slither? It does not. Darn. All right, what's your guess? A crab. Did I even write it? I oh, did. Oh, yeah. I don't remember there being a crab in Nemo. So in Nemo, towards the end, there were crabs in like the tunnel thing and they would do like this oh, thing. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. What's your guess? Oh, man. Let's go with jellyfish. A narwhal? <laughs> oh. You're right, they're not in packs. They might eat krill though. No, no, those are the big whales. Guys, I lost this one again. Stay tuned to see if I'll win the next one as Stay we continue. Stay tuned as we continue our series. Of animated. animated. And then to see if Bagel wins next time. See you soon. You never know. Bye. It'll happen. <laughs>